Hey everybody, it's Kendra. Welcome to my channel if you're new and welcome back if you've been here before. So today I'm going to be welcoming a very special guest. Welcome special guest. Bonjour everybody, my name is Paul and I'm Kendra's husband. Ah, so Paul is a Frenchie and I've invited him to come on here today because we are going to be talking about a very French concept, a French word. My dear, what are we talking about today? We are going to talk about charcuterie. Charcuterie, exactly. Mm -hmm. I feel like we've been seeing this word a lot, um, especially in social media. You see charcuterie boards all over Pinterest and Instagram. So as we are approaching the holiday season, I wanted to do something with charcuterie. Talk about what it is the correct pronunciation, because this drives me crazy. Um, talk about what it is, talk about what it is not. And then also, we are partnering up with iGourmet today um, to make an amazing charcuterie board. I had never heard of iGourmet, and then a couple months ago, I heard about them. Um, so they sent over some amazing products. We're going to be doing an unboxing, and then making a charcuterie board. Okay, so Paul, first of all, how do you say this word? I just pronounce it charcuterie. Okay, so three syllables, charcuterie. Okay, like if you want to be super Frenchy, it's like charcuterie. Because the French, they love this like sound coming out of the back of their throats when they say their R's. Charcuterie. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. As an American, like my mom asked me, for example, how to say it, and I'm just like char, Q, like the letter Q, and tree, like a tree outside. So like char, like Charlene. Char Q tree. Three syllables. I hear people say charcuterie. Charcuterie. No, please, please, if you take anything from this video, charcuterie, not charcuterie. Okay, so now that we've got the pronunciation down, charcuterie, not charcuterie. Um, Paul, what does charcuterie even mean? What is this word in French? Explain this word to us. So charcuterie is actually some cured meat. So like salami, prosciutto, or in French you say saucisson sec. Uh, so any kind of cured dried meat, basically. So is it mainly just like pork or beef or like, would you ever see like chicken? Would you ever see like I saucy stone with like chicken or turkey? Maybe some do, but like mostly it's mainly pork, I will say. Like money pork, sometimes beef, sometimes venison. Uh, but yeah, it's mostly the ID, some dried red meat. All right, and when do people generally eat charcuterie? So charcuterie, they eat more that during aperitif. Apéro. So what's an aperitif? Apéro. So in French, apéro is like when you have this lengthy lunch or dinner, you know, with all the family and friends, uh, you tend to give some kind of appetizers beforehand to open the appetite. So aperitif, appetite. Uh, and so this is where you give some wine, this is where or some champagne, and you will have some snacks in a way. And so charcuterie is mostly done at this time. It's a considered a kind of snack. Uh, and when we have gone to France and we stay with his grandpa, I mean, imagine like we fly from Chicago to Paris. We take, you know, an hour to journey to get to grandpa's house. And so we're super jet lagged. It's just like we're just exhausted. We are met with a bottle of champagne and a saucy stone sack. And I mean, <laughs> to me, that's not the greatest way to start it. Well, maybe it is the greatest way to start it a is. trip. Um, <laughs> but you end up like, yeah, you get kind of drunk. Um, with uh, saucy sausage. I think everybody jet like should be welcome <laughs> with some saucy sausage and some champagne. And some champagne. Actually. Um, okay, so we talked about wine. We talked about champagne. Um, are there any other beverages that you think pair nicely with charcuterie? Well, honestly, I would just say take the beverage that you like. Like it can be even beer. Like it's fine if you like beer. And if what if you you're have not a drinker? Well, if I'm you're not, not a, really drinker, a drinker, I'm sorry for you. Um, <laughs> you're not a drinker either. <laughs> I don't like drinking, though, but yeah, I don't drink much, uh, only for occasions, anyway. But like bubbly water, I mean... Of course, bubbly water, anything fresh, and that will make the host feel welcome, the guest feel welcome, yeah. actually. Yeah, I feel like you're probably not going to pair charcuterie with something warm, like yeah, cold, not a tea. Uh, indeed. Yeah, I not really a tea, a tea, not a coffee, no. This is more like to open the appetite uh, more than anything. But if somebody wants a tea, you know. Whatever goes. Whatever goes in this case, like we are not. We are not the charcuterie police, yet we kind of are. <laughs> um, okay, so let's talk about a charcuterie board. We see all of these beautiful mm -hmm. spreads on Pinterest, Instagram, etc. Um, now, one of the reasons I wanted to make this video was because I saw a post and it had a beautiful platter, but it was all dessert. 
And he said, look at our beautiful dessert charcuterie board. And I'm just like... Yeah, no, I need to step in here. <laughs> no. <laughs> like, this is not a charcuterie. Charcuterie means obviously meat. dry meat and it's, it's something salty, it's something an appetizer. So you don't want that soon like a dessert when you say that. If it I can... took him to a party and I said, oh yeah, like, hey, this friend of mine is making a charcuterie board. And we went to this party and it was a tray of desserts. He'd be like... Where's the charcuterie? Indeed. Like what? It would be this? like you guys going to a barbecue for hamburgers, and you go there, and it's literally no meat and just like sweet fr fruits and stuff yeah. like that. So or go into like a pizza party, and it's like, just being all dessert it? pizza. <laughs> so we, I would be really confused. I was really confused. Uh, indeed, it's really beautiful, and I totally agree that it's a very hashtagable right kind of word charcuterie. But like it's a. Uh, but charcuterie refers to cured Yeah, it's meats. very confusing for a French person so, to see that. And, and I just want to put it out there. Like, I know that everything in French is very chic. Like, it's very chic to say, oh, like, I made a charcuterie board. But, like, it's okay to say a dessert tray, a dessert platter. Which in French will be un plateau de dessert. Right. So I just said, like, a dessert plateau. So if, if you, you want to be that fancy, sounds pretty nice too, like... plateau de dessert. Mm -hmm. Or, like, plateau, plateau de fruits if you want to talk about like a fruit tray or like a vegetable tray, you know, you've got the word crudité. I would be excited if someone tells me a like plateau a, de crudité. a plateau de crudité or a plateau de fruit. I would be like, oh, Ooh. I'm expecting some cool fruit in a nice arrangement as well. So don't think just because we speak English that like you can't say the words like platter or board or plate or tray. Like those are fine. I think it's like I would rather have someone say, I made this beautiful dessert board. Then say like, look at my dessert charcuterie board because it's like, what are you gonna get cake mixed with sausage? It's just, I will be confused. It's confusing. Indeed. Anyway, let's so, move on to the next. So anyway, that is what a charcuterie board is not. But let's talk about what a charcuterie board is. So besides cured meat, what would you mainly find on a charcuterie board? Well, any kind of appetizer really. So it could be sweet or salty. What do you think? Oh, okay, so. Very rarely sweet, there will be some exceptions we will talk about, but mostly it will be salty things or More veggie salty, things. More salty, savory like. kind of thing. Yes. Okay, so meat. What's the, what's the next most important thing to you? Uh, well, I mean, most important for you is... <laughs> Cheese. Cheese. Okay, yeah. so cheese. he doesn't really care about the charcuterie. So, he cares more about the cheese. The meat, the charcuterie is indeed nice. It pairs very well with cheese. cheese. So we will have a selection of cheese for you. Um, what but else? also you can add some veggies and you can but add some... But not like too many veggies, because if you do too it's many an veggies, then anyway. you're just getting into like crudité tray territory. So, you know, like maybe one or two veg. Yes. What else? Uh, well, any kind of appetizer, so you could have some chips for the kids, for instance, or you could have some like kind of peanuts or some kind of pistachios or any kind of like... Anything uh, kind of salty, like salty a salty kind of to open nut. the appetite, like that's, that's the point. Mm -hmm. So when I think of a charcuterie board, I generally think, okay, you've got your meat, your charcuterie, you've got your cheese, and then something like a vegetable and a fruit, something salty and something sweet. So when I say something salty, it could be like olives or pickles or a nut. Um, when I say something sweet, you could do something like, you know, you've got your fruit. So, you know, your fruit is already something kind of sweet, but some cheeses pair really nicely with honey or jam. Mm -hmm. So if you have a particular cheese that works well with a particular type of jam or honey, that's a great pairing. And then finally, you're also gonna wanna have some type of like cracker or chip or bread, something to eat your cheese and your meat with. So in the end, you can literally put anything you want on it, like but the idea of charcuterie is meat. So meat. please include that and then accommodate to the pleasure of your guests. And if you do something like this, like all with all the ingredients we just talked about, but no meat, we have a cheese board. So, That's you know, you too. can do a cheese board. Like if you're not a meat person, maybe you're vegetarian, you don't want to do the meat, totally fine. Just omit it and then you have a cheese board. You could mm -hmm. have a plateau de fromage. So you can still be fancy. Just mm -hmm. don't say it's a... It's a fromage charcuterie board, a it's cheese an charcuterie board. An, appet an appetizer, apéro, apéritif. <laughs> so anywho, that's kind of what goes on a charcuterie board. I do want to show you a couple different options for boards because you might be thinking like, gosh, what do I need for a board? So it really depends on how many people you're inviting over to your place and or like if you're going somewhere, you need to figure out something that will transport easily. Um, and also just think about how many cheeses, how many meats, how many of everything am I gonna put on this? If you're just doing some small gathering, I like something like this. 
We got this cool little bamboo California um, cutting board. This is from Bed Bath & Beyond. You know, this would be great with maybe like four or five things on it. This yeah. is not super big. I love using something like this because this is a conversation piece. You know, I'm from Wisconsin. Paul is French. We live in Wisconsin. So if I made a charcuterie board on a California cutting board, people will be like, what, why do you have this? Well, we lived in California for two and a half years, blah, 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 blah. Um, so this is a great size for a smaller kind of charcuterie board. Um, next, I have a larger one. I do love a charcuterie board with a handle just because it's very easy to carry. It's easy to serve in case you wanna walk around. Um, this was made by my dad. Today, we're gonna be using this big mama cutting board. It's got some feet on it, so it's this is pretty nice. Um, we can fit a lot of stuff on this, so we and we will be fitting a lot of stuff on this today. Um, also, I used to work with a personal chef who did catering events, and when he had big Christmas parties, he would use like a giant board, like he had this really beautiful board, and I mean it was finished; it wasn't just like a raw board. Um, but that's really, really nice if you're having a really big party because you can really load that up and you have so many different options, so much space for all these different options. And as we said, um, a charcuterie board is generally not like a meal. Um, so it's nice to put it somewhere besides a dining table, somewhere communal, um, somewhere where people can just kind of stand around or sit around, snack, drink, and chat. Also, if you don't have a cutting board that you like the appearance of, use a platter. You don't have to use a board. You can use a tray, you can use a platter, whatever you really have that will, you know, that is large enough to fit all of the stuff you wanna put on it. All right, now, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, um, we are doing this video in partnership with iGourmet. So iGourmet sent us a box like eh, 10 days ago or so. Um, and I wanna do a quick unboxing just because I couldn't believe how fast this stuff came and it was packaged really, really nicely. Um, I had put in requests for certain products, I think on like a Monday, and I think I had this by Thursday. And I was not expecting it, and I pulled by our apartment, I'm like, what is that package on our front step? So anyway, um, so yeah, quick unboxing. This is what it looks like. So you can see there's tons and tons of packaging materials in here. Everything was so well packaged. So we did get two non-refrigerated uh, things, two non-perishables. So, and they were also really well packaged. We got a thing of pickles. We got these cornichons. And then we also got a thing of jam. So this is a uh, Morello cherry, just like a dark black cherry jam. Okay, and then if we get below um, the non-perishable things, we open this up. These, this packaging material is all like super, super insulated. And then we got all of like our cheeses and meats. And then there were two ice packs in the bottom. So everything was still super, super cold. Um, so if you are interested in iGourmet, they ship things very quickly, very well. Everything was in perfect condition. Yeah. All right, and Paul, what cheeses did we get from iGourmet? So we got some pretty amazing cheeses. I'm so excited. <laughs> he's so excited. He's like four hours ago. He's like, babe, can we film this? I'm like, um, I need to get yes. ready. And he's like, Let's talk. I'm Let's hungry. Okay, Let's anyway, cheese, go. Cheeses. So, the first cheese is Comté. So Comté is a hard paste cheese from like the Alps in France. Uh, it's from Comilk and uh, it's one of my favorite too. Another cheese to go with is Camembert. And I wish you, got, actually I'm glad you guys can't smell this because this is delicious. Lovely smell, I love it. So this is called La Petite Reine. La Petite Reine, so it's a camembert, so I could not do a cheese platter from ordering such a good website as Igourmet without getting a proper camembert. So everybody knows camembert, it's a soft cheese. And it's also soft, cow, right? Yes. I think we're cow only cheese, doing cow cheese soft too. paste, uh, it stinks uh, and it's delicious. Then uh, another one that is a, a cherished one is this one. So this is a petit basque, or petit basque. Uh, this is a cheese from, uh, this is a cheese from the Basque region of France, which is where my mother lives right now. And it's in the southwest of France, close to Spain. Uh, and the Basque region is actually hovering over France and Spain. And the reason we got this jam, this black cherry jam, is traditionally petit basque is served with black cherry jam. Okay, and then finally for the meats, what do we get for meats? 
So we got an assortment of uh, a lot of different kind of meals. So the first one we went through is some serrano ham. So jamón serrano. Here we go. So it's a Spanish ham. To me, like uh, dried cured meat is mostly Spanish or Italian or south of France. So I would not go without a Spanish meat if I have the choice. So this is what I want. And through. this is very similar to prosciutto. Mm -hmm. And iGourmet does have prosciutto, but I think all the prosciutto from iGourmet that I saw was, I think it was from the US. Unless you bought like a whole leg, which obviously we didn't. Um, okay, so anyway, we got Hamon Serrano, and then? So another one to, we got is uh, Bresoala. Uh, Bresaula. 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 I am. I think. <laughs> I am definitely not familiar with this, which is why I chose it. Like, um, so it's dried, uh, it's air dried beef. Um, I'm very impatient to test it. Uh, this is really good. I've never had this brand, but the caterer I used to work with, he would often get brazala for his charcuterie boards. Oh, it was so good. It was so hard for me to be preparing these boards and not just eat all of it. All right, and finally, we have this, which basically is like what you would think of as a saucy sauce sec. Um, and this is called Campo Seco. So, I th so it's dry cured country style salami. I believe this is made in the US. Um, yes, I believe it is. Um, but I think this is more like a Spanish kind of style uh, sausage. Yeah. Okay, so that's what we got from my gourmet. Are you ready to make a charcuterie board? I am ready to make the charcuterie board. Let's do it. All right, so we are working on the cheese. So we just took off this packaging and this is really well packaged. We've got more plastic wrap in here to keep this nice and fresh. All right, so let's prep our cheese. So first I've got the comte. Um, Paul, should we eat this or no? No. The rind we're gonna cut off. Okay, so cut that off. I think with the comte, it's kind of nice. Like you could do little strips like this. You could do it like this. Um, you could also do cubes. You know, you could do kind of chubby little cubes. Like this. And then you also could be real fancy. We have one of these um, cheese things. I don't even know what we call this, like this little cutter thing. But you get these really beautiful thin slices of cheese. These are my favorite. All right, so next we're working with the Petit Basque. So should we eat the rind on this one, Paul? No, no, I don't think so. So I think it's nice to have a charcuterie board where everything is ready. Like I don't want people to have to eat around um, a rind. So we're just gonna cut this out. So I think for this one, because we are pairing this with jam, either doing, you know, sort of small slices, like you could leave slices this size, or, you know, maybe you cut them in half. Um, I think something like this could be nice, or cubes like we did with the Comte. Now we're only using half of our Petit Basque today because we are just having a very small family gathering uh, this evening, so we'll just save this for later. All right, and then for the Camembert, so it comes in this cool little box. You don't have the smell, but believe me. It's definitely smelly. It's delicious. So I can feel this and it does feel slightly soft. So we may have to be very delicate with this when cutting it. It might be rather oozy. Now, what about the rind on this one, Paul? Are we keeping this? Oh, we are definitely eating that. Oh yes, we're definitely eating this one. So let's cut this in half. So you can already see Right here, it is getting sort of nice and ripe. So this is fine. This will be fine on our board. Sometimes when you cut into a camembert, it is like oozing out. So that could be difficult um, for a cheese board, but this one will be fine. Plus Paul will eat this up super quickly. So for a camembert or a brie, I think it's nice to do little wedges or triangles because this is one um, a lot of people like to eat with bread. So it's nice to be able to just take a little wedge of camembert and just spread it with a knife onto a piece of bread. All right, so this is our Campo Seco uh, salami. This is like a saucy son sec. So you could just do nice, you know, little slices like this. Oh, that looks so good. Um, I also think it's really nice to do these at a slight angle, you know, a nice diagonal. 
and you get it's just a slightly bigger piece. It does look slightly fancier being on the angle. And then also I do wanna do one fruit and one veg. So I got this nice cosmic crisp apple here. So especially for presentation, the way I like to do apples is just slice off the sides and then thinly, thinly slice like this. So you get these nice, pretty little slices. You could easily pair this with a nice piece of cheese. And then also I've got a radish. So this is a beauty heart radish, also known as a watermelon radish. And I thought this would be really beautiful for a charcuterie board because it is just so gorgeous. Um, I feel like something like this is maybe a vegetable not a lot of people have seen. And it's just really shocking. So again, conversation starter. So for this, I would probably, you know, quarter it and then slice it. You could peel it um, or you could just cut out like any sort of blemishes and then do some nice slit thin slices. I'm gonna put some camembert down here. So cute, so pretty. All right, and then we've got our petit basque. All right, so with our petit basque, we said that this black cherry jam goes well with it. This is gorgeous. This is like full on big chunks of cherry. So we're gonna do obviously like a little container of jam. I do like if you're doing, you know, jams or honeys to kind of have something to contain them. Don't want that spreading everywhere. And yes, please leave a little spoon with it. All right, we've got our comte. All right, now for the meats. For the um, like jamon serrano, for the serrano ham, and for prosciutto, I generally like to roll it. I think this looks nice. You can get nice and artsy with it. Kind of make like little sort of rosette type things. I just had a little bite of this jamon, uh, this jamon serrano. It's real good, mm, yum. It's got a slightly different flavor than prosciutto. Um, and the, the slices seem slightly, slightly thicker. And our kitty has just arrived. I think she smells the ham. Okay, then we've got our saucy zone sec. Some little bits out here. All right, so now we're working on the brazaula. So since this is round, I like to generally just kind of fold it in half. Um, and you can just kind of put it like all artistically, you know, in a little pile. You could roll this, you could do like little rolls like this. Um, but I think it's pretty cute on a charcuterie board to do different different shapes for your meat. So, you know, we've we rolled our prosciutto cause, or our uh, serrano ham because that's longer. And then we're folding um, folding the brisola. Now, some other things we can add to this. How about some nuts? We got some pistachios here. Also, I think some pickles or olives are really nice with a uh, charcuterie board. We have a nice thing of cornichons actually from iGourmet. And in cornichons, you can see they have this little plastic thing on the bottom with this little scoop on top, but it's kind of impossible to do that when you're completely full of cornichons at the beginning. So cornichons are basically itty bitty little French pickles. And again, I'm using a small dish here because you know, pickles are wet. I don't want all of this liquid to run everywhere, get on my meat, get on the cheese. Okay, so we got our cornichons here. All right, let's add in some pretty apples here. You know, and this is really nice to just kind of start doing and see how much space you have. And if you want to cut a bunch more um, maybe saucy zone or more cheese, just sort of fill in as you need. So a charcuterie board is something that's very nice to zhuzh. You know, you start putting stuff on there, you see if you need to add more stuff, you just kind of play around. All right, and then finally, I've got some gluten-free flatbreads. So I'm just gonna kind of break these up and just kind of add these to the board. All right, so I would say this looks pretty good. Um, we do have some baguette that we will serve on the side, um, just because that's like, we don't really have space for that here. Um, the only other thing I could possibly think of to add to this would be a little container of mustard. Sometimes you will see mustard um, served with charcuterie boards, but for our sake, I'm not going to. Alrighty, folks, so there you go. That is what we made for our charcuterie board. What do you think, Paul? Let me tell you. That's the comte. Mm. Good. 
Are there any tricks for Comte? Should it be left out a little bit? Mm. Should it be slightly room temp? I mean, all cheeses are room temp to me. So. I think they're better at room temp. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's just how I prefer it. And I don't think anybody's going to complain about that usually. So it should be fine. Okay. I'll take a bit of a camera. All right. Your cam Here, we can set this down. Yes. All right. Testing the camembert. Mm. Is it good? Mm -hmm. La Petite Reine is the winner. Let me try just a bite. Mm. Oh, yeah, it's good. Mm. I generally find camembert to be really strong, but that one's really good. Mm. Mm. And try with a bit of jam. Of course. Okay, now the Petit Basque with a peu de confiture. Can you have the first bite? Ooh. Yeah, you make me be a messy person. Mm hmm. <laughs> oh. How is it? It's good. Mm. Yummy. Mm, so good. Yeah, it pairs really well. Mm. A bit exactly. of sweetness with at the, the beginning, mm. and then at the end, it's kind of cheesy, salty, cheesy at the end. Mm. Very good. The marriage between both is delicious. Mm. Let's try the meats. All right, little brisola taste mm -hmm. test. Mm, it's very smoky. Mm -hmm. It's really good. We had like very smoky. I was surprised how smoky it was. Mm. Mm -hmm. Let's try this one. Sure. So we got some Serrano ham. Mm. So many flavors. Mm. Well, that's really good too. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like I don't eat a lot of meat, but I do like my pork products. Oh. Mm -hmm. All right, and a little, what do we call this one? What was the packaging? Campo Seco. Mm -hmm. mm, cheers. Well. Yeah. Mm. They all, they all three have different flavor, Textures. smell, texture. All very different. Mm -hmm. So and that's another thing I would recommend if you're doing a charcuterie board, try to get different flavors um, for both your meats and your cheeses. You know, here, with our cheeses, we got a camembert, which is, what do they consider that, like a semi-soft cheese? So soft cheese. So, like a oh, soft, yeah, soft semi-soft cheese. Mm -hmm. And then we did have two that were hard, but Comte has a very distinct flavor, and then the Petit Basque is nice with the jam, so we felt like those three would work really well. If we were going to add more cheese to this, I would probably add a goat cheese and also a really old Parmesan because you get like these big chunks of Parmesan, really old ones with salt. Oh, they're so, so, so good. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure which other meats I would add to this if I were to expand this. Um, jerky, maybe. Yeah, you could possibly that put some jerky. That would be a bit jerky. more American, but mm -hmm. yeah. So anyway, we hope this video gave you guys some ideas and inspiration for something to take to your holiday gathering this year. Um, a charcuterie board requires very little skill. If you can use a knife safely, you can make a charcuterie board. The main thing with a charcuterie board, it's just presentation and it's getting really, really high quality ingredients. Yeah. Some excellent cheeses, some excellent meats, a few extras, you know, and then it's just presentation. It's just cutting stuff nicely and putting it all together. Um, if you are interested in iGourmet, I will leave a link down below. Um, definitely check it out. They have so many good products, so many cheeses. When I told Paul about this, he was so excited. Like he goes on iGourmet all the time. He's like, when can we order from iGourmet? Like he wants his cheeses. Um, and the fact that the camembert especially has been in our fridge for about 10 days now uh, really shows some willpower on his end. He's been asking me all the time, like, when can we eat the camembert? Um, anyway, Paul, do you have any closing thoughts on a charcuterie board? Well, no, I just want to say to everybody to enjoy their time for the holidays and uh, to really appreciate to sharing that with their family and friends. Eat well, drink well. Mm -hmm. Enjoy well. Be grateful. Merci beaucoup. Et à bientôt. Then thank you, my special guest, for joining me today. You're welcome. <laughs> so anyway, I hope you guys are doing great. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video. Merci beaucoup et à bientôt. Bye!